Okay, I'm here with Brother Rob Rudnick, the chairman of the Interposition Society of North Dakota. Rob, uh, we want to talk to you about your arrest uh, last week, still last week, isn't it? Or was it the week before? The week before, now. Wow, the, these days are the, going by really by fast. So fast. But a lot, if, if, if you don't mind, just to, let's start with um, the beginning of your tour your, uh, with, okay. with your sign truck around North Dakota, you you tooled around here, Watford City, and then you went up to Willet Williston, North Dakota, one time before, didn't you? Actually, I had started a couple of days before that. What had happened was, is I was developing the signs in Bismarck. I was just finishing up some therapy on my knee in Bismarck. It's easier to get mm -hmm. into a, a physical therapist in Bismarck than right. in a boom town like Williston. So I was finishing up there, and I was uh, uh, developing signage for it, and I. Uh, uh, put it together, and then I left on my tour after, I didn't do Bismarck, I started out with Dickinson, I did Dickinson. Okay, you uh, started in Dickinson, uh, Dickinson. Dickinson, on, the, on Interstate 94. Describe, describe the truck for me real real quick. It's a 1992 uh, one-ton van, Dodge, E350, or B350, whatever it is, and, and it's a little window van that I've taken the seats out of, and I have a lot of my equipment for work and living in, and, and I... Uh, uh, so what I did was I stop uh, just a second. That's bad. That's bad. It's gonna get hot. But I, I, gotta, I gotta do it. Okay. Now, I I tape. Uh, I just taped anti-abortion graphic signs, the standard ones, a head and forceps on three sides, the back, the left, and the right. Right. And I put a text message next to it that I had printed up and laminated that says the governor can nullify abortion. So right? you went around three or four different towns, medium-sized towns. Some first for several yep. hours, and then I went over to. Uh, Kildeer, because Kildeer's at a great intersection for truck traffic. You know what I like about And you Kildeer? had no problem from the police in Dickinson. I had no problem from police or people anywhere in the state, except what I'm about to describe. And I, I, we've got a guy here, we can back that up for the for the big tour. Sure. Uh, from the missionaries. Anyway, so uh, <clears throat> uh, we went up to Kildeer and was there for a few hours, and then we went over to Watford, and Watford is just golden because of all the traffic. Sure. You know? And a lot of people are seeing this message, and a lot of people from out of state are seeing this message, because most of the truck drivers in the oil patch here are from out of state. So it's it's really a force multiplier for, for getting the message out about gubernatorial nullification, which is basically what we're all about, especially with all evil federal laws, but especially the, the aborticide holocaust. And so finished up in Watford, and then uh, uh, I thought, okay, well, let's, let's go up to Williston now, you know, and I... Uh, well, but it was Saturday night, so I, I chilled out, uh, and then I, I went up, I got up Sunday morning, I stayed at a truck stop, nobody said anything, you know, of course I do tend to park in between parked trucks, so nobody knew about it, so I get up early Sunday morning, and I go to church, and then I park it behind the garage at church, so nobody sees it there, and I, after, after church on that Sunday, I go and I start circulating around Williston, and I circulate for about two or three hours, and then a couple of young cops stop me. And uh, they, they said, take off the signs or we will arrest you. I said, how about if I leave town? No, take the signs off. I said, okay. I'm starting to get a little hot under the car. And I, Did they stop you on, on their own initiative? They just saw you and decided we've got to stop this here's guy? Here's what they said. Well, eventually, here's what they said. You know? Okay. So I, I'm, I'm going you, to get You gave them a little, oh, yeah, sorry. I'm going to get, that's all right, that's all right. Because you didn't know for sure that I was. I, 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 uh, I'm starting to cut off my signs. I say, okay, I'll do this, but you know... You know, this isn't my first rodeo, and I've had some uh, uh, legal stuff before, and I don't always get a lawyer, and I don't always win when I get a lawyer, but sometimes I get a lawyer, and sometimes I win. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be looking into this, because I've had no trouble anywhere else in the state. Sure. And then I, you know, started getting a little more stern with them. I said, you know, you guys are, you know, voiding on the uh, Constitution here, you know, when... Oh, uh, it's for your little bit of authority and money. I mean, you know, it's kind of shameful in a job environment like this. They're not really that desperate. Did you, know? you get a little angry? Yeah, I got a little angry. Sure. And uh, uh, they were acting at this point like little kids, because they're like in their early 20s. Uh -huh. It might have been an emotional thing where I'm like yanking their strings because I'm their dad's age, you know, I'm yelling at them. Right. Yes, sir. You know, it's kind of, it was really kind of, don't do that when you're in your 20s. Yeah. Don't yell the cop well, I don't think most people, are, even police, are not used to people, especially around here, coming at them from such a principled perspective. Yeah, right, from, right, you know, right. Police it's don't just, deal it's with just mostly that. people boozing and, yeah, you know. Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. They, they deal with so much of that. And, and 
And a person who is guilty is a lot easier for the police and courts to deal with because they're willing to make deals. Yeah. You know, you get on principal stuff, and now all of a sudden they're on defense. Yeah. And they can get they can get real stubborn about that, you know. But uh, so they were acting like little boys with their hands caught in the cookie jar, dead to rights, you know. And they were saying things like, "Well, here's your insurance information back, Mr. Reddick. We believe that you have, but we just don't have anything current." And I found it later, you know. Yeah. And. Uh, Oh, uh, because I was talking about... So they let you go. They let you yeah, go yeah, at that point. they let me go yeah. after I took the sign. After off. you removed the sign. It's just only taping it, so I went out of town and I upgraded. That's how I try to deal with stuff. Whenever I have a lot of trouble with police, I try to immediately upgrade. So I put the beautiful ones on alongside it with the text in the middle. So I got a hideous one, a beautiful one, and in the middle, the, the governor can nullify abortion. You know? mm. and the, and so, then I, so then I joined you a couple of days after that. You are... Damn. Yeah. Well, let's see. And you're then probably... I went to Minot. Right. Then I went to Minot and Newtown. No trouble there. No trouble. Newtown was copacetic. I went through Newtown four or five times, I think, with all that traffic. And that's I mean, on the Fort Berthold reservation. Indian Reservation. Right? And that's, yeah. that's common. In the ghettos and the mm-hmm. reservations, we generally have less trouble than in rich white neighborhoods. Okay? Right, right. Rich white neighborhoods, people are used to getting their way. They throw bigger, more dangerous tantrums. Okay? Sure. Up to and including sicking the police on you because right. they have clout. You know? Right. So, uh... uh had no trouble on the reservation, no trouble in mine. I had no trouble anywhere. Then I then I went after Newtown. Then I went back to Watford and picked you up, and we together upgraded the truck with the the trailer I have with with a slightly different set of texts. The Malachi image. The Malachi's yeah. are on each mm-hmm. side. And I have those pictures. Yeah, yeah. you have those pictures, and and on each side of the trailer. And then we have a different, slightly different set of texts on the back of that trailer. It says, uh, "End abortion. We'll need God's blessing to check the feds." which I'm convinced is true. I think all these problems we're having in our country right now can be traced to, you know, innocent blood guilt curses upon the land. Mm -hmm. You know, if the Bible is true, the Bible speaks about these things. Mm -hmm. Other advanced civilizations have done this before Mm -hmm. and been totally Mm -hmm. ruined by it. Mm -hmm. We may be walking, we may well be walking that same path. Mm -hmm. It's it's all the way to national security, you know, and Mm -hmm. that's not the reason I am opposed to abortion. It's it's a, it's a, you know, an abomination in the eyes of a holy, righteous God. That's the main reason, but that will have very practical consequences in life if mm-hmm. the nation goes there. So uh, we're uh, uh, we put it all together, and you now you would join me, and mm-hmm. you're going to be like my guy riding with the camera, you know. And at that point, we went down to uh, we went through Watford, and we went down to Dickinson, and we toured Dickinson, Jonathan, you and I did, and then we went to Bismarck and Mandan the next day, and we did that yeah. for and hours and hours, hours and hours. Hours and hours, no trouble. We camped out uh, in you know, Mandan State Park. It, on on the on the Great Missouri River, on right? The Great yeah. Missouri. It was on the Bismarck side. Yeah. Oh right. But it right. was uh, it, yeah, uh, uh, it's Sibley Park. We now we covered, we shrouded them. Well, we shrouded them right at the entrance to the park. Nobody has a fit. We we drive in there. We, we drove walk. by the state capitol. Yeah, we drove by the state capitol. And 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 you know, it's worth mentioning. Uh, you wrote a letter, didn't you, to the to the senators? Yes, I, yeah. I. Well, we both wrote a letter to the House of Representatives, to the governor, the lieutenant governor. Uh, the Secretary of State and the Attorney General. Every member of the legislature. And then every member yeah. of the state Senate as well. You know, we yeah. wrote two different letters, one right. to the Senate, one to the House, right. and, the, and the governor and, and those other uh, executives. Nobody said anything, you know, saying that, you know, now is the time for the state house and the governor to say no to the federal government on a border side. And I've given that, I have delivered that message personally. To now, the when government. you say no, are you talking about no and please, federal courts, allow no, us yeah, to no, say no. No, no, no. Yeah. we don't have to do that. We, we've got a system of checks and balances in this country, and the states have every legal right to say, we get to decide what a Holocaust is. We get to decide what murder is. It's none of your business. We get to do that you know, in this country. There's a system of checks and balances, and it does work two ways. In the early 1960s, the federal government was holding certain states uh, accountable for their stand on segregation. That was completely correct, but you know, it's 40, 50 years later, now the shoe's on the other foot. Now the federal government is way bloated and, and uh, well, way go, destructive, and so now it's our turn to do it to them. Go back to abolitionism, the, uh, yeah. the state of Wisconsin defied the U.S. Supreme Court, yeah. did not return the yeah, runaway they, slaves, they, which was totally constitutional. Yeah, the completely. Constitution completely, no question about it, yeah required them and on top and there's no mention of abortion in the constitution but there was very clearly a mention of slavery on top of that they had a direct supreme court ruling telling them return the runaway slaves and, and the it. state said no and they yeah. were threatening secession 
All we're talking about is a, a nullifying aborticide. Mm. You know, we're not talking about, you know, becoming the sovereign nation of North Dakota. We're talking about ending the Holocaust unilaterally as a state with the governor and the state house. You know? So you and I went around Fargo where the only abortion clinic it, is. In the state yeah. is. We went all, all day this. long. All day long. Yeah. We had zero problems. And you brought me back here where we are now yeah, to Watford right now, City last Watford week. City. Last and week. Then, then I go up with this whole unit with the truck and trailer up to uh, uh, Williston and I tour for a couple, three more hours. Oh. And they, they, they pull me over and they arrest me. They pull me out of the truck. They impound the truck. I bond out later in the day. And uh, the truck, this is... How many days later? And again, it's the city attorney. Did the they did they mention attorney, her? Taylor yeah. Olson, the city attorney again. This is a Taylor, uh, masculine Taylor or a feminine, feminine Taylor? Taylor or yeah. questioning? Yeah, no, or, it's a female. Okay. It's, All right. it's a female. Uh, she's quite the bleached blonde. It's, oh, okay. It's a, it's a, uh, she's, uh, you know, I don't know how long she's been practicing, but she's a city attorney by contract. So, so it was her court. discretion, not not theirs. Yeah, and so the first time they were saying I was violating a sign ordinance, which some, look little local sign ordinances do not trump our founding. No, you document. you won that uh, argument uh, in, in Minnesota, another state, in right? In Minnesota in 2005, from a 2003 episode where we were arrested for doing something very similar by a city attorney by contract in Anoka. Right. And I I have cited that to the police yeah. there. And so, you and you won your Minnesota Supreme yeah, Court. Uh, uh, Supreme Court thing. That's a fair amount of. Stuff. Stereo decisis. There's also stereo decisis, and we're running all over North Dakota, and not having any trouble with anybody except Williston. Except Williston, the boom town. The boom town. The alleged boom town. I don't think it's near the boom town that your city here, Watford City, is. But everybody thinks Williston is huh. the big boom town, you know. But uh, so, d how long did you sit in jail? Just a day. That's plenty. You're not supposed to be getting violated, you know, arrested for uh, practicing your First Amendment rights. Remember. The most protected form of free speech of all is inflammatory free speech because it needs the protection. Popular speech doesn't need protection. <clears throat> Robert, this, this van, now it wasn't just a sign van. Um, you were living out of it. Yeah, you? I, well, I, you, the rent is $2,000 a month, and I was on workman's comp, you know, yeah. and it was beautiful weather in the summertime. Why should I pay $2,000 a month to live inside when the weather is so It's a big a big van. It's built to be able yeah, to yeah, do that in it. But, but my point is that when they when they took that van, they didn't just take your, your, your well, activism, your free no, speech no, no, away. No, 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 no. They, they, so they, so my, my blood thinners were in there for days before I could get at them. And uh, it's, it's where it was where I was domiciled, effectively. I mean, I have an address, you know. But, you know, like everybody else, but, you know, I was in there for months, so all my stuff was in there. So I, I was, you know, doing things like living in the derelict uh, trucks near a truck stop in their uh, dusty old sleepers or on the grass in a wheat field or sneaking into a church overnight or, you know, things like that. I stayed one night at a friend's house. So, uh, you know, it wasn't, I mean, it, look, I'm not saying this because I need all kinds of pity. Because, so, okay, I understand. Yeah, I just want to establish the fact you were living in the vehicle and, yeah, and, and you, yeah. to this day, now it's over a week later, yeah, know, and know. you do not have your home. Not yet. Not and, yet. Okay. Or, or have, my ride, i got to go back to work pretty quick. Yeah. I, need a tr I need a truck to get to work. You know? Right. So, and, so you know, is there is there a, a message that, that you want to get? You know, I want to ask you, I don't know if you can do this, maybe yeah. I'm presumptuous, can, is there something you could say to, that would be all encompassing ab about this, you know, to, to the media, to your uh, state uh, representatives, to the people in the government of the state? That reminds me of something. Yes. This was a very interesting episode. Just before the missionaries to the preborn got to Williston, which is a whole other story about all of this, the, uh, uh, a state senator from Minot called, I'm sorry, I forget his name. That's my fault, okay? It's, I'm, I'm terrible with names, really terrible. I'm sorry, Senator. But he called me saying, hey, I got uh, your letter a long time ago, but I'm just reading it now. I'm the guy that sponsored those bills. Mm -hmm. Do you know anybody who can help me out with the campaign? Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. a very legitimate question. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'd like to talk to him about it. He sponsored a lot of these bills. Sure, you know, sure. And, but he uh, took an interest in your arrest. Yeah, and then I told him what was going on, and he said, oh, man, you need to call State Senator Lyson over in Williston, and he'll talk to you. And, Boy, I got him right on the phone. And he says, I'm going to talk to the police chief in 45 minutes. And he did. And he called me back and he said, well, I talked to him. And then we, uh, part of the problem was we had, we had a, uh, the, the, our lawyer said, I want, I want the contact information so I can, you know, send it. And I got it, but I sent it accidentally to the wrong number. So instead of her getting it 
at 9.30 in the morning under our time. She got it at 12.30. It, it, it ran you into the on weekend. On a Friday, yeah, on a all Friday. Right. But they're going to come in Monday morning and see all these, hey, you, you lay off of these people by 9 a.m. Friday or sure. else. So as well, of right now, you have you have a, a defense attorney. The, uh, we, or yeah, no, and, well. And it's us and it's, it's ISND and missionaries to the freeborn because that's a whole other part of the story. I was doing this to break up some fallow ground, as it were, for the missionaries to the preborn tour that's going from August 5th to the 15th. Today is what, the 10th as we speak? I, b- I believe they so. The so they have five more days to go here. Okay. And uh, uh, they've already been in Fargo, Bismarck, Mandan, Dickinson. And you're, and you're running with them right now. Well, um, in Williston. In Williston, I, you okay. Know, it's okay. Getting, I, I got I to gotta figure out, that's all kinds of what stuff. What you're going to do with work out, and yeah, everything. All right. That. Well, the, um, but... Uh, Let's go ahead and wrap it up, so, I guess, because yeah, so I, I don't want to delay them. Right, yeah. well, but, but, but by the same token, what they're, uh, they, they had no trouble. Now, what's going to be interesting is... Have they done Williston? Okay, they did Williston with just, because they didn't have any... Handheld... We were in legal limbo. Okay. Because, and part of that's my, okay, I own part of that by right. sending it to the wrong number. She didn't get it until 1230 when I found out, okay? Right. And that was into the weekend. So... Uh, that I own that, but we were kind of in legal limbo, not knowing where we stood. So the way Matt handled that, he says, "Okay, we'll start out with the yes sign number one signs for 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Okay, that was okay. We'll put up the pretty ones for another hour, and after that, then we'll take a look at the hideous ones. Mm-hmm. And so we got as far as the pretty ones, and then the rain came. And you see, this is going on. Oh, so this has yet to be tested still. Well, yeah. here, well, tomorrow. Well, let me ask Steve now before yeah. I let you go. Okay. Yeah. Well, do you want to turn the camera, or do you want him to sit I'll here? I'll just turn the camera. Okay. That's all right with you, Steve. I just sure. I just want to ask. Hey, Steve has been on the whole tour. Yeah, Steve. About the tour, Steve, I, I just wanted to ask you. Give me just a second here, and I'll move over to where Rob was. I'm Jonathan O'Toole. I think I shook your hand a moment Steve. ago. What's your last name, Steve? Gretke. Could you spell your name for me, please? G R O T T K E. Okay, Steve. Um, First of all, really welcome to North Dakota. We're really glad that you've come here. It's it's just delightful to me. I wish I could be on the road with you. I just came back from Canada, getting ready to go to Africa, and we're but we're very thankful. We praise God that you've come here. Thank you so much, and uh, please pass that message from me to I will, to everyone. I will so, match well. Okay, and so not to delay you any further. Um, I just wanted to ask you, you've heard what happened to Rob here. Have you had any trouble at all so far on the tour from law law enforcement? We have had no trouble. The the police have been very accommodating. Um, In fact, uh, there's been a few that have said, we we agree with your message. We just want to make sure that the traffic is flowing. Mm -hmm. So the real issue is when we're passing out lit at the corners that, uh, you know, they're watching their steps when they're on the islands. Sure. Passing it out. Not that they step in the middle of traffic or weaving between the cars. Sure. Um, other than that, as long as we stay off to the sides, they're okay with us there. So that's the okay. only um, guidance that they have really given. Okay, okay. All right, well, we sure wish you well. Thank you for your time. I'm going to come out and uh, greet everyone with you. I'll go ahead and stop these.